everybody. It's Heather Pastor, Artist Ambassador for the Atlantic Center for the Arts, coming to you live today. I think it's one o'clock. Is it earlier than one o'clock? Oh, it's one o'clock exactly. Um, just uh, again, if you just missed it, um, Heather Pastor, Artist Ambassador for the Atlantic Center for the Arts. I'm here today in my home studio, New Smyrna Beach, Florida. And we are going to be um, using uh, an American painter named Stuart Davis as our, well, we're going to use his work as our inspiration to create a piece of artwork with a little paint and some paper cutout that um, is part of actually the last in our summer family series. So I tried to um, design these courses so they could be enjoyed by both adults and kids and I think um, I haven't seen a whole lot of examples that have come up um, from everybody in the last couple of classes so our workshops that we've been doing online here so if you've been working or maybe you maybe didn't catch the live presentations but you have maybe tried these projects somewhere along the line and you would like to share what you've done, I'd love to see those on the Atlantic Center for the Arts Facebook page. Or you can also email me images if you're not comfortable putting them up on the um, World Wide Web. And my email is hp at heatherpastor.com. You can do that if you like. Um, the, the, the title of this um, class today, this workshop, is All Jazzed Up. So Stuart Davis, again, was an American painter, and he was, I guess, in New York City, again, in the early 1930s, uh, 1940s, and was very inspired by the music, the jazz music that he was hearing. And um, the piece that we're using specifically today is um, called, and it's a little bit of a, it's a long title, it's called hot stillscape for six colors seventh avenue style so what that pretty much mean and this means and this is the the piece of artwork here and it was also the um it was the piece that we used for all of the promotion for this class today for this workshop and hot i think he used probably because it's also a term that's used in jazz. It's kind of a hot, um, uh, how did he put it? I found some kind of a quote from him. It's a jazz term It's because of its dynamic mood. So he was trying to create a mood with this piece. And there's a whole lot going on in this piece, if you can't tell already. Um, and he did use six colors. So he used red, blue, yellow, the primary colors, black and white, and looks like an orange, kind of a uh, yellow-orange kind of a color. And um, this is not the best, the prettiest. My printer ink was running a little low. So this isn't quite as vibrant as the actual piece is. And when you see it online, the colors really pop. So I'm hoping we can create a piece that's a little, got a little more pop to it. And um, so Stuart Davis, um, actually did a couple of different pieces that had very specific elements, very specific um, titles that would lead you to believe that he was using um, jazz and swing music um, as inspiration for his work. So I tried to pick out a piece by Dizzy Gillespie that I think kind of has the same vibe, the same movement to it that this piece does that Stuart Davis painted. And I'll play that for you here when we get started doing our work. Um, I want to go over the list of supplies that you might need for today. And these are always, um, you can add and take away most of these things you can find at home. Uh, if, you, if you don't have, say, colored papers, sometimes uh, like magazine, like you can find solid colored um, images that are in magazines. So you could use something like that. You can also, if you do have paint and you don't have the colored paper, you can always paint paper 
and um, you know you probably would have had to have a little forethought to do that today but you can always paint the paper any color that you want and then use that as your color paper as well and you can paint it with you know acrylics or watercolor whatever you really have on hand you can even use like food coloring I think on paper as well um, all different kinds of funny little dyes and things that you can make out of um, things in nature and I can't get into all that right now but um, there are ways around it if you don't have colored paper um, so let's talk about what you're gonna need to get started on this project so you can start collecting all of those little bits and pieces first and foremost we're gonna create our piece and it's never um, it's never that important the type or style of paper I have a plain piece of white paper you could use colored paper if you have it um, I think this one's probably about 12 or 14 inches by like maybe 17 inches it's a pretty good size but don't feel like you have to have a certain size paper either um, it's really just more about the putting the pieces together on whatever surface you have if you don't have colored paper we're going to be painting it, so you want something that has enough weight to it that it's going to accept um, the, the paint easily. You could even use, I think, um, if you were on with me last month, we were using um, like recycled cardboard, like out of your recycle bin. So if you have, um, you know, like a cardboard, like a cereal box or I don't know, any number, pasta box or something like that, you could use a piece of cardboard and we can paint on that. Um, but I'm using like a mixed media, heavier weight, uh, uh, white piece of paper today. For my sample, I used a piece of cardstock, and that's just a little heavier, again, just a little heavier um, weight paper, something that will still go through your copy machine, but is not, or your copy machine, your printer, but is not, um, it's not your regular run of the mill, um, drawing or excuse me uh, copy paper like that really thin paper you could use that um, but with what we're gonna be doing we're gonna be doing some layering probably be, be better if you had something that had a little bit more weight to it um, okay so paper I have a variety of um, Facebook changed things just a little bit on their live broadcast so I couldn't hit the little magic wand to make all of these things appear um, correct in front of you and um, so everything's gonna be mirrored image which is a little annoying but I see that it's available now I can see where it is on the screen I just can't reach it from where I'm sitting so I'm using acrylic paints today and I have I'm gonna pick six different acrylic paints um, just because Stuart Davis did six on his and I thought well okay I'll start with six and if I go a little crazy and pick some other colors or something along the way that's okay too you don't have to do six if you have a couple of different colors. Uh, we're really just gonna use the paint as our background. So don't feel like you have to have six different paint colors or even if you have a couple, like I can make orange with my red and yellow if I wanted to do that and include that color. Um, there's again, always ways to work around. Um, and I never want anyone to think that they can't complete a project or at least jump in on this project with me if they don't have all of the supplies that are on the list. So I'm using acrylic paint. Again, if you've got temper paint, acrylic paint, uh, you could even do your background a watercolor. It's not gonna have the same punch as uh, like Stuart Davis's style, but that's okay. Um, it's all pretty much about kind of finding your own style anyway along the way. So I've got um, six different, I picked like a blue, red, yellow, you'll see them as I paint them, like kind of a magenta um, or it's called purple pizzazz. Uh, like a lime green and a turquoise. So those are the colors I'm gonna use. And then I'm gonna need some paint brushes to be able to paint my paint onto the surface. And if, again, you were with me last month, you know that you can also use your finger um, to paint, like old school style. Don't have to have brushes, but if you do, that's always a plus. Um, I've also used for like art journaling, um, you can use like a credit card or a like an old gift card or something, plastic card to just, we're just pitting paint, getting paint on the surface of the paper. So um, whatever you wanna use to do that. Um, even if you have a piece of, um, another piece of cardboard, you can swipe paint on that way too. So we've got paint, our paper, brushes, 
anytime I do an acrylic painting, I need some surface, which I don't know if I put this on the list. I may have forgotten it, but I need some kind of surface to put those paints on. And that, again, that could be a number of different things. A lot of times people will use like a, uh, like a lid from a piece of Tupperware or um, I like to use disposable paper plates. Um, you can even, um, you could literally put it on a, a ceramic plate if you have one and they'll wash up, like acrylic paint will come off of them. Um, and then I have, oh, glue. So I prefer the glue sticks. If you have um, like a, a liquid glue, that's fine too. Um, something to adhere because what we're gonna do we're gonna do a background paint and then we're gonna adhere some paper cutout pieces some collage elements to our um, acrylic painted surface so however you want to do that like I said I like the sticks for something like this um, you're just using lightweight papers if you have a uh, thicker paper that you're gonna be gluing on you might need the liquid glue so some kind of an adhesive a pair of scissors you're gonna need some scissors, any size will do. And with the acrylic paint, I have my cup of water here off to the side and a paper towel to paint excess paint off onto. I think that sounded right. Um, so just to rinse my brushes out and then use the paper towel to kind of, to get the excess out of the bristles of the brush. Um, oh, and if you want to do like on his again he was painting all of these elements now we're going to be doing some paper cutouts so if you have um, different shaped items that you've come across maybe in your home i have a selection of lids round lids that i've collected because that's the kind of weird stuff i do um <laughs> as an artist and an art instructor i collect a lot of strange pieces i know i'm not the only one um, so this is the peanut butter Jif peanut butter lid. Got one of those and I think this was some kind of a pesto sauce. So I have a bunch of different size round lids. Um, this is not a requirement. I just thought I'd throw them in there. I just found them laying around in my um, home studio here and I thought, oh, these would be good because I can trace these onto some colored paper and I can create um, some shape with these. Um, you can absolutely just go freestyle maybe that's more your style your speed anyway and then if you're um, if you do a lot of crafting or um, oh, what are these used for like uh, scrapbooking things like that there's these um, little like they're not stamps they're little uh, like a hole punch kind of like old-school hole punch but they have a larger they punch out a larger circle I have a couple of these. I've used them for other projects. So I have those in a couple of sizes. So you could use things like that. We're just looking for things that we could use um, to create shape. So again, um, you could even use like the bottom of like a glue. It's got kind of a neat oval kind of a shape to it. Uh, you could trace the inside of the scissors like inside of here. That makes kind of almost like a little kind of a strange elongated kidney shape on this side um, so anyway just be creative kind of look around at what you've got laying around your house and um, you know maybe you have some figurine or something that's on a base that's a square if you want something more square um, there's just again a plethora your phone you could trace that onto a piece of paper we're, like I said we're gonna be building in layers so um, just think about start thinking about that and um, and what your color palette what kind of colors you want to use sometimes you'll be limited by what you have on hand and other times you'll have the freedom to be able to kind of pick and choose based on I mean I have a, a pretty good collection of paint and different colors and I like to mix them so but um, not everybody has of that um, they don't necessarily have all of that so if you're wondering too I had created this um, sample for another class and Matisse and Paul Clay and Stuart Davis they're all kind of from that same time frame uh, that where they were they were inspired by music specifically um, Stuart Davis I know jazz and swing and I'm kind of excited about um, getting started on this project with you so hopefully 
while I've been battling, you've been collecting the items that you're gonna need and we can get started. So grab that, whatever surface it is that you're gonna paint today. I've got my white paper and then I'm gonna just create myself a little palette with the colors that I, the acrylic paint colors that I picked up and hopefully they behave. I didn't check them here, there we go. Some of them may have been sitting for a little while. So get yourself something and put some paints on. And then you could, if you wanted to, I'm gonna probably go pretty freestyle in the background, but if you want, you could use all of those shapes I was just telling you about, like, you know, a cell phone or a cup, the bottom of a cup or um, your glue. You could start tracing those. Oh, I think I forgot to tell you, you might wanna have a um, pencil, just a plain old number two pencil on hand. Um, I did, just to give you an idea, this is the background for one of the other samples that I created for this class. So I didn't glue all the pieces on because I wanted to be able to, to show you how we're gonna do this in layers, but this is the first layer. And it's literally just a painted surface. I didn't draw any of these lines on, I just picked up the brush and I started painting on, on the background. There's really no rhyme or reason to it. I just kind of tried to look at my sample piece here or my inspiration piece and kind of pick out some shapes and some line that were of interest to me. And um, I don't know. So I'm gonna do something similar on this one. I'm not gonna put a whole lot of time and effort and energy into thinking too much about this because it's gonna get covered with so many other pieces and other elements that we're going to cut on paper that um, it's not really, you're not going to see a whole lot of it probably. And then these are also the types of projects that you can continue to add to even after our time is over. You can always um, keep adding layers as long as you like. So here's my pretty palette. That's actually really pretty is running all the way down the page. And if you want to chime in and let me know um, where you're joining me from today, I know it's another bright blue sky, sunny day here in New Smyrna Beach, um, but I know that with being online, we're far reaching now. So you could be joining me from anywhere in the country or elsewhere outside of the country. I know Atlantic Center for the Arts has a nice, um, they're known um, across the globe, I think. So. If you are um, watching from some place, no matter where, if you're in my own backyard here or, or across the globe, let me know where you're from. That's always kind of neat. And if you have any questions along the way, it's a little bit difficult for me to answer them um, right now, given the setup I have, but I'll be sure to um, respond to any questions that you have and just type them into the um, comment section below and I will respond after I finish up here with you okay hopefully it won't be too late by then I know I'm pretty sure Catherine's on helping me out she might be able to answer some questions if they're not about the the, um, the class or the project specifically oh and I just was thinking I forgot to tell you that if you haven't already and you have a couple minutes um, they're doing pre and post uh, workshop surveys, I think still. So if you see a link um, on the events page, the pre, we might be a little bit too far into this now to do that. And I apologize, I forgot to mention it. But the post, we definitely like to, to get your feedback on the, um, the Facebook Live workshops that we're doing. So if you wouldn't mind giving us your feedback there should be, I think, a link somewhere out there, um, either in the event, I think in the event, uh, where it'll ask you, it'll have you click over and answer just a couple quick questions. So I have a variety of different sizes of brushes. Again, um, my go-to is usually is the three quarter inch flat wash brush. So that's what I'm using today. But you don't, again, doesn't matter. Just a brush and some paint and whatever you want to do. Now I tend to be a very, and anyone who's taken a class with me before knows that I like saturated color, I like very opaque, I like very 
clean lines. Like that's just my style. Um, that's not everybody's style and that's fine with me. So whatever your style, like I'm going to go over this a few times to make my stripe because I want it to be nice and um, very vibrant color. And I, again, I'm not thinking too much about this. I'm just kind of letting this happen organically, getting some paint on my brush. I just dip a dry paintbrush into the paint, especially when I'm working on um, like a mixed media paper like this. If you get too much water in your brush, it might cause the brush to, or excuse me, the paper to buckle. So um, I prefer not to wet my brush. I'm just doing a couple of stripes. Um, let's see. I like to be able to use up my paint if I put it on here. I don't like to waste anything. And then I think I'm just going to dip right into the dark blue and just try to do some other kind of, this one's kind of watery. Might take a little bit more paint. I'm going to try to go on an angle here and do another give you an idea of what I'm working on because you can't see. So I'm just going to do that. And, and again, like I like a very solid line. So I'm going to go over this probably with a little bit of a couple coats of paint, but you don't have to feel like you have to do that. Now when you're changing from one color to the next, Make sure that that brush is cleaned out really well, especially if you're going from like one color family to the other. Like I was just working in a couple of different blues. So but I'm gonna dip into some yellows and reds in this pretty kind of, um, kind of a red violet color. And I'm gonna try to make sure this brush is cleaned out really well. Did anybody have a chance to take a look at what I was um, had posted in the event? I put up um, a, which is the one I think I'm going to do for you right now, is um, I put a link to a YouTube version of a jazz song with, um, that's performed by Dizzy Gillespie. I think it was actually composed by him as well. And um, <laughs> it's kind of, I think it's kind of a funny little song. Anyway, I put a link to it on the events page for this um, workshop. So if you have a moment, not now probably, but if you want to listen to it at another time, you can do that. I also put, um, I think some kind of an article that I had read, which I got some of the information I already shared with you from. It was on, I think it was on um, artstory.org. It had a really interesting um, kind of story, kind of what inspired me to do this, this workshop and um, with Stuart Davis's work specifically. So here's what I'm working on. Just kind of throwing some, some elements onto the background here. And I didn't clean my brush out. I just dipped into some red, but the red and the red violet should be fine together. So I'm just getting there. And I'm just keeping it basic, basic shapes, simple shapes, triangles, rectangles, circles. Um, you can go a little crazy if you want. You can make it a little bit more uh, maybe you want to do like a like a flower shape or I don't know. I'm using my inspiration piece a little more strictly, but feel free to kind of go on your own. Um, go out on your own and and whatever is coming to mind, you know, like just paint some of those shapes. I find it's easy when you start with some shapes. You can always add to them. But all right. So just tried to paint in a little bit there. 
And then we're going to paint a little bit in here. Now he did some of these little mural-esque kind of squiggly lines. I think I'm going to do more of that, but I think I want to do that with my paper element that I'm going to add on top of this background. So you could paint in some squiggly stuff if you wanted. This is kind of where I'm going with this. And let's see. Ooh, I'm loving the color with this water. It's funny when you teach the kids classes, they're always very intrigued by the colors they make in their, um, their uh, rinsing water. <laughs> with all the different colors that they have on their brushes. And then, you know, it usually eventually turns to like a mud water, but in the meantime, there's some pretty colors that come out of it. Let's see. All right, and then my sixth color is yellow. Oh, I forgot my green, I lied. This is my fifth color. funny I find that I usually try to plan my compositions and it's nice sometimes to just create very it's very liberating to just sit down with without a real clear picture of what you're expecting something to look like I think usually I create things I like the most when I do that because I don't have any preconceived notion of what it's supposed to be Kind of just let it become what it needs to be. Oh, I was going to put that music on so you guys could hear that. Hopefully it inspires you. <laughs> um, let me get that queued up here. Let me get the rest of this yellow in this space here. And then just be careful if you're doing what I'm doing that if you don't want the color mixing to happen to just be very, I've got some blue up here. I know if I catch it with my yellow brush that it's gonna make a big green splotch, which I don't particularly want. Can't say that mistakes that have happened on my paintings haven't ended up being some of my favorite things, but not what I'm going for today. All right, so I got that, and then I gotta decide, oh, I've got that cool, like, lime green. All right, so here's what I've got so far. And you don't have to cover your whole sheet either because, again, you're gonna be adding some other elements here, so don't feel like you have to paint the entire, you know, if you have a really good sized piece of paper like I do, you don't have to cover it all. You can leave white. Obviously, he had quite a bit of, whoops, quite a bit of white in his, Use a lot of white elements, so all right. Let me cue this up for you and see if I can get this to okay. So, this is Dizzy Gillespie, and the name of this piece is Salt Peanuts, and it's just kind of fun, quick paced, um, trumpet heavy on the trumpet. I'm not really, I don't know my music all that well, but I just know what I like when I hear it, so I thought this was kind of fun, and like I said, kind of had the same vibe as that Stuart Davis painting. Now I can't say that Stuart Davis was listening to um, Salt Peanuts when he was painting, <laughs> when he was painting the hot stillscape for Six Colors, Seventh Avenue style, but I can say that we're gonna listen to it and hopefully be inspired for this piece, so.
fun little jazzy tune, right? Like I said, I can't guarantee that um, Stuart Davis was listening to that particular song, but he was inspired by the jazz and the swing music from the 1930s, 40s. Um, so hopefully you're feeling inspired by that as well. Okay, so while we were listening to that little ditty, I finished, and it's kind of hard, it's a really nice kind of a neat uh, fluorescent green, but I put a couple of fluorescent green, yellow green kind of elements on my painted background, and I'm going to continue to probably paint a little bit on this, um, but I want to also talk to you about the paper elements. So I really want to do just one more thing. I'm thinking you guys are all probably still painting as well. The reason, that, another reason I really like these flat wash brushes is because when you're doing something like this where you want like some crisp elements, it's really nice to be able to, um, I didn't measure anything, I just kind of um, dragged my brush um, in these areas, these spaces, and it makes a really nice, fairly clean line if you do it slowly enough um, without having to measure and, and get really, again, you can tell I'm, I'm pretty type A in my painting my painting style if I'm talking about measuring things um, and using a ruler at times but I want to try to sneak some of this green in here too I did exactly what I told you that you shouldn't do which is get too close to um, the colors that you've already put down that might not have dried. So I just dragged my color through that purple. So happens to the best of us. And I don't know. I'm just kind of playing right now. Let's see. And I want to just add one more thing. I think I want to do the blue down here really quick. Afraid I'm not going to have enough time to show you everything I want to show you. Ooh. And what's up with this, this blue? It's very, very liquidy. It's very fluid. This is not supposed to be fluid acrylic, but it's behaving as such. Giving me a much more like a watercolor than an acrylic. It's very, I don't know, must have separated somewhere along the line. Okay. I do hope that you guys will share what you're doing. That really makes my day. When I do these workshops and people will share on the Facebook um, event and or email me the photos like I like to try to it's just it's hard when you're not in front of um, a group to know whether everybody's kind of hanging in with you so it's nice when you see what people have been able to complete from their own and not everybody wants to share I'm not you know I was never really one to share a lot of what I was doing. Art's a very personal thing, so I get it. But if you would do me the honors. Okay, so here's what I've got. It looks pretty basic, pretty um, elementary. And But once we start adding some other elements to it, like I said, these are very, um, I like having the painted background and then adding to it um, some of these colored papers, which will be kind of fun. So I'm gonna set this aside to dry, and in the meantime, I'm going to save that. start looking at, so here's gonna be the kicker. I don't have all of these same six colors in colored papers. I have a lot of colored papers, but they might not match all of these very, as well as I'd like them to. I have, and again, um, just over time I have almost like a confetti style colored paper that is cut into let's see if I can show you 
like literally like these long strips, almost like it can't, it might've come out of actually my um, shredder, my paper shredder. Um, so anyway, it's, and it's all different. It almost looks like a little, you can make a little bird nest out of it. But anyway, these short little pieces I think will be kind of fun. I wanna incorporate some of those. I gotta wait for my background to dry completely to do that. But so you could cut um, your paper into strips they could be any size strip. So these are a little bit wider. Um, you could cut it into just a plain basic rectangle. So you could do something like that. To get started, like I said, because what we can do is add some paper elements and then if you want to, you can even go back in on top of that with your um, paint again. So these can really take on a very, a very cool, sophisticated, I mean, Look at the elements in his piece. This is like, I don't know how long it took him to paint this particular piece, but there's a lot going on in this in this painting. So when you look at it compared to this, this is nothing. This is just the beginning stages, but this would be like something that is in its completion, obviously. Okay, um, so I wanted to show you a couple of other techniques. So if you don't, have all of these strips of paper already cut and you don't have um, necessarily you know like these fancy punch hole punches or paper punches and you haven't collected lids you can also take like just a you know rectangular piece of paper and what I did to create some of these shapes like these funky shapes um, is kind of like old school like when you're in when you're in school and you folded a piece of paper like so, literally just fold it in half. And then either with your pencil, you could draw on like, I don't know, I'm gonna do like kind of an amoeba strange shape here. Actually, it kind of looks like a dog bone. And I think I wanna do, well, let's just start there. So I just drew a shape on and you can't really see it, unfortunately. Oh, there, it's a little better. My lighting's a little funky, so. Anyway, you can draw yourself whatever shape, and then it's on the folded paper. So you fold it from the folded line, like, or you cut from the folded line. So here's the open side. Here's the fold side. I'm gonna start cutting from the folded side. And I might jazz this up a little bit. Ooh, in honor of our, because that shape just didn't look like it had enough going on. This is almost probably gonna look kinda like, well, let's just see what it looks like before I start saying what it's gonna look like. Okay, so then I cut out the shape. I don't know what it is. Didn't really have any. I might wanna round these up a little bit though. And I cut them on the fold. So here's my fold. So it's gonna open up kinda like a book, right? So this is the shape I got. Not loving this shape, so I might cut it into two, but what I was gonna say is that you can then again, fold it the other direction. If you do it like as a circle, it probably works a little bit better, but if you want just something a little bit funky. I folded it the opposite direction and kind of cut out again inside. So it almost looks like, what are they, like a Rorschach test? <laughs> so I have this funny, strange shape. But what's kind of cool, and you can do this just with a plain old, um, like a circle, which is kind of more the direction I went with this, where, so like this was just folded, you know, in half, and I just, I cut out around, and then I cut an inside, like almost like the letter C. Well, I don't know how you're saying this, letter C. So, and when you open it up, you have a loop. So you can actually like weave a piece of paper, you know, make it look like, you can give it some depth by, you know, having part of another shape that's on the top and then kind of pulling it. It's hard to show you, like, I hope you're kind of getting the idea, but one is on the top or on the front and then this part I, um, Kind of threaded through here so that it's on the back 
So then when you go to glue it down, you have this element, and I'll glue it down eventually, but you have this element <laughs> that is, looks like, um, it's just a little more, like I say, sophisticated. It's not, you know, you're not just putting one thing on top of the other, but you have something that is creating the illusion of depth on this two-dimensional surface. So again, when I glue it down, you'll get a better picture of that. But now I just put it through with paint, so. Okay, so you can create some interesting, and if you don't like the shape, like I'm not wild about the shape, so I'm gonna go back in here and I'm gonna cut parts of this off. So I make something I like more. So you can kind of play with it. And then, then you have the space in the center too where you can put your scissors and kind of cut in between. Some of the best and most interesting things come from the scraps too. So don't throw away the scrap paper yet because you might find a fun, interesting element that you want to repeat um, that you thought was just going to be something that you throw in the garbage. You got to make sure you keep your scraps at least until you're done with the piece. So I'm just kind of playing, having fun, pulling different elements out of this. Shaping it up a little bit, because when you do that initial shape, a lot of times you don't know what it's gonna look like. And then you can go back in and make it what you really want it to be. Okay. So that's kind of neat, I like this one. So I think for the sake of time, I'm gonna um, put these on my other, this one's already been painted and dried. So I think I'm gonna use this one to finish my sample for you guys. Okay. So again, if you didn't catch that, I folded the piece of paper in half, made sure on the fold side, like I used to do that a lot when we were trying to make like a heart shape. Um, cut on the fold side, and again, you could do like a half a circle, which is not a circle. <laughs> it almost looks like a little mask or a little pair of sunglasses or something. <laughs> um, uh, I'm gonna make that a little bit smaller. And then, oh, and see like this is the kind of stuff that pops out of that. Like I just trimmed that. I don't know if you can see it very well. But it's like a little smile or like a like an eyebrow shape or something like kind of interesting and they will be fun like you could put a few of them together you know and like layer them i'm gonna glue a couple things down because i can tell it's a little difficult to see um, when i'm just holding these things up so i'm going to just take a little bit of my glue stick make sure i get it on all edges I forgot to tell you too, I mean, if anyone's worked with paint before, you probably want to cover your um, surface that you're painting on because it doesn't necessarily always come out of clothes and or um, fabrics. But again, sometimes I think of these things a little too far in. Sorry about that. Okay, so just glued that down. And then I had a bunch of stuff that I actually cut ahead of time, like just some weird, like little, kind of like a weird bone shape or whatever. Um, now this one I did not create with six colors. This one. I, well, you know what, I think I'm gonna use one of these little stamps and cut out. You're gonna have a little trap door. You guys are gonna get your stuff out. And then cut it. So here's my little circle. I'm gonna throw this on here. I'm just gonna try to do a little space here. This almost looks like an animal or something. <laughs> I didn't mean for that to happen, but it's kind of funny, those types of things. Like when I did this sample, 
I put it all together and then I looked at it and I was like, this kind of looks like a chicken leg or like a, like a, I don't know, it looks like a bite taken out of a chicken leg or something. I mean, there's, it's kind of fun when she put this whole composition together to go back and look at it and see what kind of strange things you can pick out that might look like, like, I feel like these kind of look like butterfly wings and this might look like, um, like a, for, a part of a, um, like a caterpillar or something. I don't know. I mean, you can just go crazy with this stuff. And then some people, maybe they don't see any of that. I don't know. It's way more fun if you find something to, something kind of silly in there. So here's another interesting shape. And I'm going to glue this one on here. And then if there's parts of your background that you painted and you look at it and you're like, mm, I don't know, I don't really like that, or it didn't come out like the way I wanted it to, that's when you take these little pieces of paper cut out and you cover them up. And then you add layers to it and you won't even see it anymore. So and again, you know, you can lay these elements out. I've done that and usually do that. Um, so that's one way to tackle it and then go back and glue all the pieces on in a specific order and, um, you know, be very meticulous about it. But there's also something to be said for doing just the opposite, which is just kind of going with your gut and picking a spot, gluing it down. Again, if you end up not liking something, what's the worst that can happen? You can go back and... Sometimes you can even peel it right off, but if you, um, you know, you can always cover it with some other elements that you like better. So, don't get too hung up on it, on the idea of where something should, where something goes or how it's going to fit to the grand scheme here. And again, I cut a lot of these interesting little, I call them amoebas, or um, like a very just strange organic shape. There really was no, I did a lot of this ahead of time so that I, but I wanted to show you the, the option you had in, um, you know, cutting things on the fold gives you that um, continuous shape like a circle or a ring or something like that. If you wanted to do something like that, just having it, you know, cutting something on the, on the fold and then opening it up. You can also just, you know, like again, old school style, like cut that in, you know, on the fold and then just snip a little bit in the center with your scissors. And then when you open it up, you can, you know, move your scissors inside of the shape. Um, and cut it however you want to. So now I'm finding with some of these papers I have are a little bit thicker. Um, they're almost like colored cardstock. And this glue stick isn't necessarily doing the trick for them. Um, I might want to do the, the glue all or like the liquid glue on a couple of these um, thicker papers. If you're using like magazine paper or something, this will be no problem. Like this will work just fine. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and trace a couple of these with my pencil. If you found some interesting shapes in your world, in your house. And I like to do a lot of like um, concentric circles where you have like one circle and then another littler circle inside and a littler circle, kind of like the little Russian doll idea, only with circles and paper. You have one inside the other inside the other. I just like the way that that looks. So I just traced my lid. I think that came off of like a, um, probably like my almond milk or something, just a little circle um, on the spout there. So kind of my work in progress. And then again, like what I, again, enjoy about doing something like this is that I kind of start with an idea of what, way is up and then as I'm moving along and as I keep adding elements I tend to turn my page sometimes and look at it from a different perspective because 
sometimes when you start with it horizontally like I did and then you turn it vertically you're like oh I kind of like what's happening better from this angle so you have that prerogative you can kind of make those adjustments as you go along as you move along And then what I'd like to do, and I don't know where I'm at with time, what I'd like to do, ooh, man, an hour goes by so fast. Um, what I'd like to do is to go back in and add some um, paint elements on top of these paper cutouts. So let me see if I can just do enough here so that I can, and search out those um, scraps, like I was saying, because there's some really cool stuff happening here. Almost like a little, I'm gonna make a little crescent moon out of this one. So I know that it's not always something that you can finish like with me in this moment. Cause again, look how far I've gotten and I had all of these pieces, these elements cut out already. So um, to kind of continue to layer it, that's what really gives it the life, is the more that you layer, the more life it get, you know, it gets. So I'm gonna put some little, I like using these little rectangles, like I'll cut, I'll just take a cut a strip of paper and then I'll cut smaller little rectangles off of it. And then you do something like that, you almost want to put the glue stick right on the, rather than trying to put glue on each one of these little pieces. I put the glue stick on the actual background surface. Just moving right along here. And then I had also thought about, I know, again, like, even though you can be inspired by somebody else's work, like Stuart Davis's, um, sometimes you want to make it your own. Like I had considered putting some kind of, again, like typographic elements are kind of, again, my thing. So I had thought about adding like word or um, some kind of a quote or I don't know, something inspirational. Like you can, you know, add that into some of the spaces that you create look at some of these like little like these little areas that are created and different shapes that are created when you're layering these um to me again that's always i don't know just it's interesting to me how much of that um is created without a whole lot of thought i don't know i suppose that there's artists out there that make every swipe of their brush with some intention but I have to believe there's also just as many of them out there that do just the opposite that really just let it be a very intuitive kind of experience and I think there's something to be said for both of those styles or types or techniques in painting or creating art period Here's again a bunch of these little, I don't know where to put it where you can see it, <laughs> all these little scraps that I cut and I was like, oh, this is kind of a cool shape. Ooh, I want to learn, I want to figure out how to incorporate this into my work. got some things that elements that have little pointy features so you might need extra glue again this glue sticks not my favorite it's a washable glue stick which washable is great if you're in a school setting but when you're trying to get something to really adhere well um, These are not my favorites. But again, it all gets the job done. You just need maybe a little bit more of it. Yeah, I can 
so glad that I cut some of these ahead of time. I would have definitely run out of time otherwise. There's abstract elements here, abstracted elements, but they start to take on some kind of life. They almost start to, like I said, create these um, shapes that look like, whether you intended it or not, like they look like something. They evoke some kind of a, an emotion or a make people think of something. Is, I think one of the main purposes in art is to make sure that you're um, engaging with the viewer and giving them something to think about. All right, so I think I'm coming up on my, um, my hour long workshop time frame with you guys. I will definitely be working on this for a little while. I want to um, encourage you again to, ooh, let me just do something. I wanna do something on here to just show you what I'm kind of getting at with. I like to use the end of my brush here. Not the bristle side, but the, um, like the little nub on the top of it. So I've got this fun like um, red violet color that I think will be a nice complement to this composition that I'm creating. So I'm just gonna take the little nub end of my brush and I wanna put some more little circles here. And this is actually gonna be paint on paint, but I think I'm gonna try to find some place to also paint something on top of the, so you could paint on top of your painted surface or you could paint on top of your paper elements. So I just added those little dots across the top. Well, kind of leading to the bigger dot that the, is that same color. Um, hmm, let's try doing something like that. Yeah, you have to dip into the paint every time to get a good solid color if you do this little using the end of your brush technique okay so just to give you an idea so that's what i'm doing whoops again lighting is a little funky today but and then i can't decide yet which direction i'm going to turn this but when i finish it i will post mine for everybody to see can't expect you to want to do that if I'm not going to do it myself. So um, anyway, I hope you kind of, um, I hope you enjoyed this little um, play with getting a little jazzed up on paper here with paint and uh, paper cut out and that you create something that you love that you want to put in your home somewhere or give as a gift. People always like to get gifts of um, art, handmade goods. So um, anyway, thank you all for being here with me today and feel free to share this too. Like I said, this video is gonna live on the Atlantic Center for the Arts um, Facebook page. So if you know someone who wanted to take this class today but couldn't make the specific live um, time frame. It's gonna be available beyond this time, and um, you can view it at any point when you have a little bit of time to start creating. 
Um, and at least, like I said, we got a good start here and I will post my finished product um, on the page when I get the rest of the elements I want on it. And I hope you will do the same. So thanks for being with me here um, for another family or again, like I said, kind of sad, the last in the summer family series. Um, all jazzed up. I'm Heather Pastor, Atlantic Center for the Arts, Artist Ambassador for the Atlantic Center for the Arts, and I appreciate your time today. Have a great one.